This is Spunky. And Snarky. And we say, welcome Welcome to to the the show. Hello and welcome back. I can't believe it's already March. Oh my god. Time is just flying by, but I got my first COVID shot, so I'm feeling kind of hopeful that maybe this year will pick up and be a little bit better than last year. Yeah. This week we have an interesting show for you. With St. Patrick's Day coming up, we thought that it isn't easy being green, except maybe on St. Patrick's Day. But the rest of the time... (laughs) It's not so easy, so we decided to watch one of my favorite specials from when I was a kid, which is the Muppets version of The Frog Prince. I watched this a lot as a kid. I'm a huge fairy tale fan, so I used to watch all the fairy tale theater, like, all the time. We'll (laughs) tackle those someday. But (laughs) this one's very special, and I remember it a lot, especially the main villain character, Tamanilla, and her lovable henchman, Sweetums. I want to cuddle Sweetums, but we'll get to that later. (laughs) But without further ado, let's dive in. Today we're watching The Frog Prince, which is a TV special released in syndication on May 12, 1971. It is a one-hour adaptation of the classic fairy tale narrated by Kermit the Frog and directed by Jim Henson. So our story opens up at a well where we see Kermit taking a swim. I like that they use actual water and the Muppets are in the water for this well scene. So he goes on to say that this is a special about frogs and you see a princess in the distance and he introduces her as Princess Melora and she's under an evil enchantment unfortunately and that's why she's all sad. But he's like, this story's about frogs, so let's get on with it, the frog prince. So he's sitting around the well, and he notices a small frog nearby, and he hasn't seen him around before. And he's like, what's up with you? And the frog introduces himself as Sir Robin the Brave, and tries to explain that he's not really a frog. He's a prince who was turned into a frog. And goes into, like, a flashback scene about how he, like, fought this ogre and there was an evil witch. And meets the ogre and is like, I'm Sir Robin the Brave. And it's hella funny because the voice of the frog and the voice of his, like, live action counterpart is not even close (laughs) to the same thing. Anyway, so he sings that song like three times until the witch is like, I've had enough of this shit and turns him into a frog. (laughs) Then the other frogs just like laugh at him and they're like, yeah, sure, you're a prince and I'm, you know, the queen of Egypt. So he's all sad. But Kermit is like, don't pick on him. And Robin like appreciates that Kermit stands up for him. So in order for Robin to be changed back into a human, he has to meet these certain conditions that the witch laid out. So he has to be invited into the castle and befriend a princess who then has to kiss him. But it just so happens that their little well is pretty close to an actual castle as I hear the trumpets going off and a royal proclamation being told. So you see... (laughs) The king, who's, like, completely, like, in Muppet form, and he's, like, my daughter, my laurel, is gonna be queen when I step down today. (laughs) Voiced by Jim Henson. And Robin's super excited, because now there's a princess, so he can get kissed and turn back, and Kermit and the rest of the frogs are like, why do you want to be human? Because it's great to be a frog. And song ensues. (laughs) like the song there's like a melody of rivets that kind of make up the like underlying background music and they're like it's great to be a frog and swim all day and play in the mud and eat flies and all that fun stuff yeah (laughs) the princess comes down to the well and robin is taken aback by her beauty and then her father comes down and kermit and Robin eavesdrop on their conversation. And they learn that she's under an enchantment that prevents anyone from understanding what she says. She has, like, a backwards speech. And her father, being kind of dumb, doesn't understand a word she says. 
even if you listened, you'd probably be able to pick up most of it. Yeah. The father leaves and she sits by the well and starts singing a sad song about how she's turning 19 and she's going to become the queen. Of course, we don't know what she's saying because it's all in gibberish. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm my team, my, my team, my earth day is through air. <laughs> yeah. I love watching fairy tale things and I like musicals, but this was kind of painful to sit through. She accidentally drops her golden ball that she is playing with in the water. Robin introduces himself to her and offers to get it for her if she will be his friend and take him to the castle. At first she's reluctant, but then she agrees. Robin does a deep dive into the well and Kermit's like, oh my god, like he barely knows how to swim. How the hell is he gonna dive and grab this golden ball that probably weighs like 10 pounds? And it's like the size of him. <laughs> yeah, but he does it because he's Sir Robin the Brave. And he retrieves her ball and gives it back to her and she's delighted. So she puts him in her little basket and takes him back to the castle. But before they leave, Robin learns that Melora's aunt, Tamanilla, is the same witch who put the spell on him. She put a spell on him. And now he's a frog. I just want to mention, for those who haven't seen it, that Princess Melora is actually a human. And Tamanella is a muppet who's, like, purple and has, like, red hair and a snaggle tooth. <laughs> yes. Robin tells Kermit about Tamanella before he's taken to the castle by the princess. So Kermit decides he's going to sneak into the castle to keep an eye on Robin. Also, as we find out that Tamanella is not really Melora's aunt. <sighs> She's a weevil itch. <laughs> Robin asks Melora to kiss him, saying he will turn into a prince. She doesn't believe him, so Robin tells her that he can understand her. They then sing a duet of the song she previously sang. But Robin repeats the word, translating <laughs> into, I'm 19, my birthday. Is today. Melora is just so overjoyed that she can actually have someone that understands her. That at the end of the song, she goes in to kiss Robin, but Tamanella stops her and she says, Put down that frog or you'll get worse. She tells Melora to leave her with the frog and she vows to feed Robin to Sweetums, mm-hmm. the ogre from before. Kermit is shocked to learn that Robin really was a prince. And Robin makes an escape again as Tamanel is summoned to speak with the king about the upcoming coronation. So Melora comes back into the room and Robin tells her to beware of Tamanella because she's a witch and figures out that she must have been the one who enchanted Melora. Melora, in her gibberish, she says that Tamanella enchanted her in order to stop Melora from telling the king that she's really a witch. And she says that to destroy Tamanella's power, you have to bake the hall in the candle of her brain. And Robin's like, what does that mean? Because he can't, like, figure out what the gibberish translates like, to. say what? <laughs> But they get summoned and have to go to lunch. And Robin asks Melora to kiss him goodbye. But Tamala is like, oh, you can't. Why don't you bring him to lunch? So at lunch, the king reminisces about how he met Tamanella. They were in the forest one day. And Tamanella is in her, like, drab witch witch outfit (laughs) and bumps into the king. And he's like, oh, who are you? And she's like, I'm clearly a pretty damsel in distress. And he's like, oh, what are you distressed about? And she's like, oh, if he'll believe that, I'll believe anything. And she knows it's the king. And she's like, I am searching for my (laughs) long lost brother, son of King so-and-so. And he's like, oh, that's my dad. You're my sister. And they, like, hug it out. So she tricks him into believing that there are long-lost siblings that were separated at birth. So Tamanella tells Melora that her and the king have decided that since Melora can't be understood, that Tamanella is going to be crowned queen instead of her. And Melora is like, what? But she can't talk. So she's, like, frantically trying to tell her dad, that Tamanella is an evil witch, but he's like, I can't understand you. If only like, you could tell me who cursed you. She's like, <laughs> Tam Tamanella. <laughs> and he's like, I can't understand you. Who is this Tant Amanella? And why are you pointing at your aunt Tamanella? I don't understand. <laughs> 
So Melora storms out and Robin is left with Tamanella and Tamanella takes Robin and puts him in a cage and takes him to her evil lair where Sweetums is at. So Sweetums is this big Muppet ogre who's like seven feet tall and has like yellow eyes and is super hairy and I want to cuddle him. I love him. I loved him. He's like, Sweetums. Sweetums going to eat you. He's like super <laughs> dumb, but in a cute way. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Sweetums hungry. Want to eat frog. He kind of reminds me of Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. I know. <laughs> but in Muppet form. <laughs> So Robin is like trying to talk Sweetums down. He's like, you know, Sweetums eat frog later. Frog is for breakfast. And he's like, okay, frog is for breakfast. And then he sings a song to lull Sweetums to bed, which is like, Sweetums lay your ugly head down upon your wretched bed. And then Sweetums just literally like falls back and goes to sleep. So Kermit shows up after Sweetums fall asleep and he tries to free Robin, but he can't lift the latch off the cage. Meanwhile, Melora is trying to convince her father that Tamanel is a witch, but again, nothing. So Kermit imitates Tamanella and tricks Sweetums into sleepwalking and freeing Robin from his cage. She's like, don't wake up. Keep your eyes closed and let the frog go. And he's like, okay, nice lady. And then he opens the cage and he's like, let frog go. No. And then he wakes up and realizes that the frog is running off and he tries to smash and kill that frog. Squish. Squash, kill that frog. So he's like destroying everything. Because he's like, it's yummy, yummy time. And grabs his club and sings a song about smashing things. Ends up smashing like all the furniture when the frogs are jumping around. It's really interesting how they do the puppetry of the frogs jumping and stuff. Like, it has this three-dimensional element to it, even though it's not. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, he, like, knocks a pillar over, and then there's, like, a domino effect, and, like, it knocks Sweetums out, and he falls into the wall. Kermit and Robin go to leave, but then learn that the coronation is about to begin. Robin tells Kermit to go back to the swamp and get the other frogs, while he tries to figure out what bake the hall and the candle of her brain means. Kermit and the frogs return just before Tamanilla is to be crowned and help Robin create a distraction by jumping on Tamanilla. Melora yells out, the candle of her hane! And Robin finally realizes that bake the hall and the candle of her brain really means break the ball and the handle of her cane. There's this big montage of just frogs attacking. It's funny. So Robin bites Tamanilla on her wrist, causing her to drop the cane, and the glass ball and its handle shatters on the ground. And Tamanilla's power is destroyed, and she collapses and, and turns into a bird and flies off. Melora's enchantment is broken, and she tells the truth about Tamanilla to her father. She gives thanks to the frogs, especially Robin, who finally gets his kiss. And Robin turns back into a prince, to everyone's amazement, and professes his love for Melora. The king is still confused, but just goes with it. Crowns his daughter, the new queen, and everyone sings in celebration. When Robin gets turned back, he's got, like, a new white prince outfit. Like with like the, With, like, the poofy sleeves. Actually, yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> star from Spaceball. Well, in his um, wedding outfit. And he's got some horrible hair. But not quite Prince Valium hair, but close enough. He said to Kermit, I'm a bona fide prince. He is. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about Melora's hair, because when she's, like, dressed up in her, like, royal garb, she still has this ponytail, but they almost put, like, curled weird hair, like, on top of her hair. I just noticed it, and I was like, what does your hair do? So back at the well, Kermit tells us that Robin and Melora were married and that he still sees them sometimes. Then they appear with their baby, which they name Kermit, which is nice. Kermit's like, oh, it's really cool to have a prince named after me. And leaps into the well and swims around while the credits roll. And that's the end of the special. So thoughts on the special. 
I really enjoyed watching this back. I liked how they did some of the effects, even though they're like super OG. It's almost like the worst witch where they have like a purple pink lighting background thing like super going on. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then like how the frogs popped, like almost looks creepy, but it's kind of cool at the same time. And when they're in the well too, like swimming, like sometimes they look like super weird, but it's kind of interesting. I really liked it. It kind of makes me happy. Uh, the only thing I didn't enjoy was Malore's 19 song. Yeah. But I really like the frog song and Sweetums and it's corny, but I like it. It's cute for a fairy tale. It had a lot of good laughs that I still found funny even being older. Yeah, it's a good watch. It's only an hour, so check it out. All right, ready to move on to the brain basement? Sure. All right, welcome to the Brain Basement. We're going to talk more about the Muppets and other things. I watched a lot of Muppets stuff as a kid because I used to play them a lot on the Disney Channel. This is where I probably saw Frog Prince for the first time. And I used to love Muppets Take Manhattan and The Great Muppet Caper and, you know, reruns of The Muppet Show. So who are some of your favorite Muppets? Let's see. Hermit and Sweetums and Miss Piggy and Ralph and Fozzie. I love Sweetums, too. I love Rolf the dog. I don't know. I just liked him. I love Statler and Waldorf because they're two old crotchety dudes and they always crap on everything and I love it. Yeah. They're the best. <laughs> I really like the band from the Muppet Show, too. Oh, yeah. With Animal and that, Janice, I think so. Yeah. The lady with the big lips. <laughs> and the long straight hair. Yeah. And then there's the one dude with, like, the hat who plays the saxophone. Yeah. They have a name, but I can't remember what it is right now. It's like Electric Mayhem or something like that. We watched Muppet Babies a lot as a kid. We did. That was kind of cool because even though, like, the Nana, you only see her legs and it's a little weird. But I like that they have the little adventures and when they go, like, different places, like, the animation would be different. Almost, like, periodical-esque. Yeah, they would cut in, like, scenes from movies and stuff. That's why you're not going to see this on DVD. Another funny Muppets story. When I was a kid, when I was really little, I was watching Muppets Take Manhattan. And there's a scene at the end where Miss Piggy calms Kermit into marrying her. He thinks it's, like, for their show, but it, like, turns out it's, like, real and, like, all the Muppets are, like, in the church, like, from Sesame Street. And it, like, totally blew my mind as a kid. I was like, how they get all these Muppets in there? That's so cool. And I remember that was, like, the first movie I ever cried at. Which is funny, because in real life, I don't cry at weddings, like, ever. <laughs> but for Miss Piggy and Kermit, I had to. It just takes a special couple. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like Miss Piggy because she's sassy and she don't take crap. And she, like, judo chops people. <laughs> yeah. When she's angry. <laughs> well, you ready to move on to the music spotlight? Let's do it. All right. All right, welcome to the music spotlight. For today's topic is gibberish songs in, in honor, honor of Princess <laughs> Melora. <Right. laughs> and her weird speech. We decided to look at some songs that have some weird phrases in them as well. <laughs> yeah. And first up on the list is Manfred Mann with Do What Did It. There she was just a walking down the street singing Do What Did It, Did It, Don't Did It, Do. Yeah, this is a good song. I remember when I was a kid in the 80s, like this song kind of had like a comeback because I I think it was like in a commercial or something. And I remember like kids on the playground singing this. Number two on our list is a jam that I like. It's Barry Mann with Who put the bop? Who put the bop? And the bop, she bop, she bop. Who put the ram and the ram and lamb and ding dong? Yeah, this is a good one. It's an oldie, but goodie. It's a jam. What can I say? <laughs> Moving along <laughs> to number three, which is Snooky's Guilty Pleasure. <laughs> well, actually, it's both of ours. Yeah, it's a secret no one knows. It's Hanson's with boom bop, doo ba da ba doo do bop, bop doo ba da ba boo. Bop, boo. <laughs> do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mostly we sing the parody version, which is Hail Bop. We um, sang that in a previous episode. <laughs> yeah. This song. It's not a bad song. It's very catchy and it gets stuck in your head. Yeah. It's a ditty. I mean, it kind of stood the test of time. Yeah. Number four is one of the greatest groups of all time. The Beatles with Obla D, Obla Da. 
Life goes on. La 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 goes on. Which is a good song. Not one of my favorites of theirs, but it's still a good one. Yeah, I just looked up that basically this was a friend of their catchphrase, the obla di obla da. Number five is Little Anthony and the Imperials with Shimmy Shimmy Coco Pop. Little Anthony and the Imperials had a lot of jams back in the day. We saw them live in Reno. We did. In the 90s, A long I time ago. <laughs> with our parents. Probably not my favorite of their songs, but it's a gibberishy one. So we'll move <laughs> on to our honorable mention, which is Eiffel 65 with Blue. That Dabba Dabba Dabba. Dabba. We hate this song. I don't I don't know if I hate it, but it's not like my favorite. They used to play the shit out of this in the 90s. And yeah, I, like, oh. I mean, it's kind of an annoying song. Okay, even if I don't hate it, I don't have much love for it. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. If I don't have to hear it every five minutes, it's fine. Every it's, once it's in a while, if I stupid. hear it, I'm like, oh, all right, it's all right. Because it's like, I got my blue house and my blue car. It's very and... Euro pop. Yeah, it is. But it obviously gets stuck in your head. So. <laughs> it's an earworm. It is. All right, that's it for the music spotlight. If you want to listen to these songs in full, you can check them out on our website. Well, I hope you guys have a great St. Pat's Day weekend. Try not to get too drunk. But Everyone's I... Irish on St. Patrick's Day, so yeah, party it on it. So <laughs> have a good one. I hope you enjoyed our show today and. I want a sweetums of my own. I think I'm a nice lady and deserve <laughs> your own ogre assistant. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, who doesn't want an ogre assistant? Especially one who's soft and cuddly. Anyway, thanks for listening to our banter, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Alrighty, if you want to drop us a line, you can email us at spunkyandsnarkyshow at gmail.com. You can go to our website, which is spunkyandsnarkyshow.wordpress.com. You can leave us a voicemail on our Anchor page, which is anchor.fm slash spunkyandsnarkyshow. Or you can reach out or like our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that fun stuff. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Have a good St. Pat's. Peace out. Bye.